Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm gonna be giving you nine tips to help improve your scripting in GB Studio. If you don't know what GB Studio is, it's a drag and drop visual scripting game engine that lets you export games to play on your own Game Boy. I can also export to the analog pocket. And I wanted to give some help to those of you who may be beginning and uh, want some guidance as to how to improve at scripting. Let's start with number one. I would say read the docs. As you can see here, we're on gbstudio.dev. If we click on the docs here, we have a huge list of everything you might want to know about GB Studio. Unfortunately, there is more to know. Uh, this isn't, you know, the end all be all. GB Studio does get updated quite frequently, so there will be things that are new and bugs that would be common knowledge to people that new people may not actually know about. Uh, but this will give you a good understanding of the fundamentals of both what the Game Boy can handle and what GB Studio can do. For example, you know, knowing about the assets and the background and the music is the fundamentals that will definitely just speed up your workflow. If you've read through all of this, even if you don't understand everything, it means that you know which one to come back to when you start having a problem. So number two, I would say join the community. So you can, just like on um, the main page of gbstudio.dev here, there's a link to the Discord channel and the Reddit. If you have either of those, I recommend joining them, um, mainly because people will have already asked questions that you will want the answers to. They may even ask questions you haven't asked yet, but will help you to explore different ideas that you may not have thought about before. Uh, and it's good to just get inspiration from other people and see what other people are doing. And obviously you can ask questions yourself. But yeah, joining the community is a great way to both inspire yourself and also get more information about scripting and about GB Studio. So let's imagine you've now read all the docs, you're active in the community and you've started, you know, dabbling with GB Studio. The next tip I would suggest is test often. So while you're scripting and you're looking at all of the if statements and values and stuff, it can be easy to just forget to test, but you definitely need to be testing as often as you can. Every time you do something, if you press test or press play, you can obviously get feedback from the game on if your scripting has actually worked. But yeah, testing often is very important. If you make your entire game without testing and press play, it will break. There is almost no chance that you won't have messed up just once. And just one mess up can destroy a game. And that's called obviously a bug, a game breaking bug. And uh, by testing, you will obviously fix those bugs. And by fixing those bugs, you will, you will get used to knowing what bugs there are and stopping them before they happen. And then obviously your test will go smoother and you become way more quick at scripting. My next tip for you is to explain and write down your logic. So I have a sketchbook where I write down my stuff. I also have whiteboards in front of me that I can quickly and easily scribble down ideas and kind of think about it logically about how the game will be executing my ideas. So obviously knowing the scripting events will definitely help you know what you need to write down. Um, and I found that by writing stuff down, it really solidifies my understanding of what I want the game to do and also what the game can do or what I'm physically capable of, of thinking about how it should be done. And I f also find that when I run into a problem, if I ever write it down or explain it to someone else, it suddenly becomes way clearer than if I was to just be staring at the screen, looking at all the, the drop down icon things and the variables and the math functions. If I'm just staring at all of this kind of stuff, it can basically blind me to the actual issue. So definitely explaining stuff and writing it down will really help clear your, your understanding of the logic that there is in scripting and also solidifying your understanding of the scripts themselves. So my next step is to take breaks. Taking some time away from staring at the scripts, like I said, can really help figure stuff out in your brain. But when you stare at the same thing for too long, you basically become desensitized to it. And then walking away and you're letting your brain do this stuff in the background can basically make you go, oh, you know, like a eureka moment while you're away from the actual task. So you should definitely take breaks. And I've also found that like the patience of giving yourself time, you know, like almost like going to sleep you wake up with a fresh mind and you're ready to then work again. Like I said, you've probably figured it out since your last uh, time. Or if not, when you sit down to, to try again, the problem is just 
instantly easy to fix because you you are fresh to it again. So uh, yeah, I definitely recommend taking regular breaks. Number six is to remove distractions. So when you're scripting, like we said, it can sometimes you become blind to things. You can also get the opposite where you just can't understand you know your own script. You've gotten to the point where it's so convoluted and and confusing that you don't get it anymore, and it can be very frustrating when that happens. By removing distractions, giving yourself that time to only focus on exactly what you want to achieve, it will really help you basically clear your mind and focus on what needs to be focused on. There will be some aspects of development that are so repetitive and boring that you will obviously want to be either listening to music or watching a video while you're doing it. Uh, but there will be some of those times where you need to remove the distractions and focus exactly on what you need to achieve. And writing down the, the logic can really help with that, obviously. Uh, testing often, like all of the tips before, will, will help bring this together. And if you're stuck, then removing the distractions can really help that. So number seven is ask for help. I deliberately didn't put this in the join the community part. I didn't focus on it. Joining the community and reading other people's stuff is one tip. And then asking for help should be later down the line once you've helped yourself, right? Um, if you don't, you know, understand how GB Studio works and somebody offers you advice, then it's not going to really help you. Asking for help is obviously one of those tips that is for later down the line. And knowing when to ask is also a great point. If you deliberately don't ask for help because uh, you don't want to, you know, waste people's time. Um, I obviously, obviously, I found that at the very beginning as well, where I didn't want to, you know, be a bother. Um, and there is a time where it's okay to ask ask for help. Um, and there, there will be people willing to help you. It's just knowing that you are ready for the help is the most important part. It would definitely be better if you ask for help after you've, you know, taken those breaks and removed the distractions and focused on writing your logic down to make sure that you truly don't just ask for help on the Reddit, uh, for example. And then as soon as you've asked that question and pressed post, you've just figured it out. That I've, I've actually done that before. It's kind of embarrassing where basically by asking the question, you figure it out. And that's why I had explain it to others and write down the logic um, in a different point uh, before this one is because sometimes just outwardly explaining your ideas does click something in your brain. But asking for help is a completely different thing where there are people who have had more experience than you in GB Studio and they will be able to offer advice. Some people may think I'm the GB Studio guru, but there are people who know it way better than I do and I still ask them for help. So knowing when to ask and knowing that you can ask is a great point that you should definitely keep in mind. My next point is about revisiting old code. So once you've created a project and like left it there and you know, you've learned things from that project and you've moved on, it can be refreshing almost to come back and think about how you did it and what you've learned since then and try to maybe optimize the code. Um, because there will be things that you remember doing at the very start of that project that were very unoptimized and either maybe didn't work, you know, caused bugs and you figured it out. And that's maybe something you should either, you know, remember and um, write down that you actually figured out something on your own. You know, you come back to it and you look at the code and maybe you can even fix it even more. And that isn't a thing that's saying, oh, you're a bad scripter, you know, you did bad. It actually means you're a great scripter. It means that you actually are improving. You know how to fix your old stuff. That means you actually getting be better. And looking over that old stuff again will really help solidify those ideas that you had and understanding of GB Studio. Arguably the understanding of how GB Studio works and of the Game Boy is that one of the most important parts of our GB Studio. If we were to be making games in Unity or something, there are so many limitations that GB Studio has that, for example, Unity doesn't have, um, which make it harder, but also mean that you have unique knowledge um, that if somebody new coming in uh, to GB Studio, they just wouldn't have that. Um, so you can help, right? You can help other people. Even may, you may not think you can, but I'm sure you can. So yeah, revisiting old code and thinking about how to improve it and thinking about what you did in that time is a great way to solidify ideas in your head. 
My final point is to join game jams. When I started out, I basically made all my games for game jams because it was a nice frame of time that meant that I could focus on it during that time and then not have to worry afterwards. And it also meant that I had, you know, some inspiration um, and some something pushing me, some motivation pushing me forward um, and s some inspiration pulling me forward where I wanted to get it done and there was a deadline in order to, you know, make sure I got it done. And I feel like working fast can also help you speed up in the long run. Obviously, you'll probably make more mistakes by working fast. There are some games I made in Game Jams that I was so stressed out making because I made the game way too complicated. But yeah, joining Game Jams and participating in them and making games in, in short periods can really boost your skills. Um, and it also means that you could be working with, with other people. On my first Take It Racing game, I joined with a, a musician who kindly made the music for the game. And I was so glad that he did that because it meant that I didn't have to. Um, and his music was great. It was probably better than anything I would have done in that time frame, especially since I was also designing the game. And again, it goes back to that community where you are helping other people, other people helping you, and it means that you're not alone. Not being alone while making a game is a great feeling. It means that you have someone to show it to at the end. And getting the feedback as well, that's another part where once you've posted the game at the very end, people will be reviewing it and giving you feedback and scoring it and playing the game and also maybe giving some, you know, advice as to what you could do to improve it, which is always helpful. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed these nine tips to help yourself improve your scripting in GB Studio. So yeah, I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. You guys are the best. Remember to like the video if you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Please leave a comment on what you thought of this video and what you'd want to see in the future, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.